So hello and welcome everyone. I'm Anupriya Pandey from Ink Feathers Publishing. I'll be your host for today's session. I'm a writer, editor, and a member of the writing services team at Ink Feathers. So uh, today we have with us Jas Kiran Singh, and I'm really excited for her to be here. And I'm like so glad that I got the chance to interact with her. I've read some of her poems, and uh, I found them mind blowing. She is the author of the book Seeds of Light. It is a book of poems, and as Jazz says, it uh, it is bound to bring you closer to your own self. So I would like to quote her here. She says, "Seeds of Light will enrich your soul, enrapturing the mind with the elements of love, pain, joy, and truth." So uh, let us just start this conversation with Jazz Kiran and know more about her as well as. her book which is now available at uh, ink feathers website and also at amazon correct me if i'm wrong wrong jas no you're you're correct thank you okay so uh, like the first thing that i would want to know from you is your own story how has life been so far and uh, like yeah just your own story tell us a little about yourself okay wow that's uh a great way to start. <laughs> so um just like, you know, everybody else, um I feel I'm on a spiritual journey and I've had quite a bit of challenges as well as great times, you know, and and life comes with both joy and sorrow. Um I'm 24 now and I've I've been in the mental health field for about 6 years. and growing and you know evolving and a lot of the experiences i've had so far have actually really inspired a lot of the writing that i've done and it's i've learned so much about myself by interacting with others and so that's why i felt it was so important to have a an anthology that discussed the emotional experiences and the emotional interactions not just that i was having with others but with myself and so That's a little bit about me. There there really is not much to tell. I think I've you know again like everybody else have had have, have had my challenges and my my low moments, but I try to focus on finding the light in those. So, yeah. So, are you from California or uh did you ever get a chance to visit India? No, I haven't and I'm Really I'm looking forward to coming out there and seeing you guys <laughs> and meeting the team. I really wish I can do that someday. I was born in the UK and um we came out to California. I've been I've been out here most of my life though and uh you know there's there's poverty out here too and there's homelessness out here as well. There's you know a mix of uh wealth and poorness and you know it's just There's a lot to see and a lot to learn in California too. So, so but how, I, I, uh, like you said, because of your life experiences, you got into writing. But uh, like, how did you decide to go into the publishing process? I mean, I mean to become a writer. You know, writing can be a yeah. hobby. But how did you decide to like be a writer? Great question. I think it was more of a. a chance it was more of a um an opportunity that came up i was i grew up a very anxious person actually uh, i was from childhood i i had very weird um just i don't know i don't know how, i guess it would be called stage fright or like you know when when you have performance anxiety or you just have this a uh, fear i just grew up very very fearful and so one day i You know, I finished this poem I was working on and I put my whole soul into that poem. And I said, "You know what? Today is the day that I'm going to sign up for a poetry club reading and I'm going to go read this poem and I'm going to just I don't care what happens." <laughs> I was like, wow. "I need to overcome this fear that I have." And I had been doing like performances. I I I also play the harmonium. So I'd been doing music performances my whole life, but it was just never like good enough. I felt like I was just I would always fail at my performances. I'd be really good at my practice and the rehearsal, you know, but then when I'd had to get on stage, it was like I would choke up and I wouldn't do my best. So 
Before, it was around the month of my birthday in August, I went to this OC, it's called OC Poetry Club, and I read my poem on stage and I was shaking. And um, at the end of it, the the guy that had organized the event, I won't say his name or anything, but he kind of spoke to me afterwards and he told me that he really wanted to help me get my work solidified and, you know, put into a book form. And I had never thought of that before. That had never crossed my mind. That I didn't grow up thinking, oh, I'm going to be a writer. You know, I, that just wasn't, that never crossed my mind. You know? mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was just a, a big, a big surprise. And I think I got very um, lucky that, that night. So now that you tell all about it, I'm so keen to know what other things do you do? You like, you do music. <laughs> <laughs> what are you? Yes, I, 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 so music is a big part of my life. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the harmonium. You probably are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so my mom, like, she was so eager. She's like, you know what? I'm going to put this girl in classes for harmonium because when I was three or four, apparently at, at the temple, I, I would, like, crawl over to the harmonium and, like, try to play it and stuff. And so I think she, she thought that it would be a good idea. And it turned out to be one of the best things she ever did for me because now when I play the harmonium, it's like, my form of therapy you know and I've I've I found a friend in that instrument and um I, I've tried my best to learn new instruments but I just never you know have the finances for it's really expensive out here but um yeah so that's I do music I like to dance I like to do anything creative anything that you can channel your emotions Energy, through. yeah right yeah Okay, so coming back to your book, uh, I was going through the titles, I was going through the contents actually and like I told you before, I found the titles really interesting. So the first two poems are uh, named Soil and Root. So uh, how did you choose the titles? How did you go for it? Or was there a process or you just did it? It's... <sighs> I think it was a little bit of, of, of both. I I hadn't really ruminated enough on, you know, how I wanted things to look yet. And it was funny because I felt like the whole process with ink feathers, I kind of rushed myself through it. Like I was like, you know what, it, this material needs to be put out there. Like you need to do it now. And so I didn't give myself enough time to really think about how I wanted things to go. But in the back of my head, I always had this visual of like, myself I guess or I don't know myself as like a little sprout and then growing and, and like that process you know of starting from the soil and I, I have a dad that's really big about taking out and pulling out the weeds and um, he would make me do that every weekend like you know it's because he's like it's a practice of the mind you know you're gonna go out and you're gonna pull out these weeds and it's like an analogy to pulling out those bad thoughts in your head <laughs> And somehow I just connected that back to seeds of light and how whatever you're going to plant in your own mind, you know, is going to either create or it's going to destroy. So it's up to you to nourish that plant accordingly. And I think that's probably how the titles came to be. It, it wow. kind of unfolded gradually. It wasn't like, you know, I knew how I wanted it. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I, I, I've never lived my life that way. I, I I wish I could be a little bit more uh, demanding about how I want things, but I've always been more spontaneous and just flowy. So I just flowed with it. And um, I think that brings the best of you sometimes. So I love the yeah, title of the book and also the title of all the poems. I felt like there you. must be a story behind it. I was not sure. So I thought of asking <laughs> this to you. Yeah, there, I, there is, you know. You're, you're right on that. Your intuition is, is correct. There is, a, it, it is my story. It is the, like I say, kind of that, that emotional side of, um, I don't know if what, what men really go through because I'm not a man and I don't desire to be, but I think um, with women, you know, we're just, we have this different ability to like interact with our emotions and that like sensual side of ourselves and I don't know. I just I think it's so important for the feminine 
to really integrate her emotions so that she can then bring about more wisdom, you know, because I think that's what the emotions serve the purpose of. So in each of my poems, I kind of tried to, that was the, the emotions were at their birthing phase when I wrote those poems. And it wasn't until the end where I was able to, you know, in hindsight, you're able to pick up on the wisdom, but when you're writing, it's really an, you know, an art of timelessness. There, there's no real um, logic. It's just, for me, when I write at least, it's coming from the heart. Yeah, and so is. that's kind of how I can summarize that. Otherwise I'll just go on forever. <laughs> no, like that, that really makes sense. And I think this interview is going to be too short for all that you have to tell. I think you should do more <laughs> interviews, you should do it more often. And like you're saying, I remember that the cover of your book also has a heart and like uh, yes. plants are blooming or something like that. I don't really remember. So uh, how did the cover come up? You know, I I just wanted, I had this um, visual again in my, in my mind and I, I just knew that it's something I've never really seen before you know it's not something that I got inspiration from from somewhere else I just kind of thought you know the heart is such such a um, misunderstood metaphor you know and when it's when it's shrunk it still has that capacity and it, it's 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 our source of, of life you know and that's what I try to highlight in the image where even though you might be hurt or you might be in pain or, you know, you have a wound in your heart or some trauma or something, there's always going to be that element of growth coming out of yeah, that. Right. So the butterfly, the butterfly symbolizes transformation. And then I know there's like two little birds flying and that's just, you know, it could be anything. It could be freedom. It's really based <laughs> on your own perception. But um, the rose was the most important part because that's the you know ever unfolding fragrance and, and beauty of life that you just never know what's going to happen and, and it's just it's always growing and it's you know ever flowing and um yeah so there's there's a lot to it um a lot of little details that i kind of just left to everybody else's imagination so that because you never want to be told how to think you know you kind of just yeah, right. want to think for yourself so yeah <clears throat> I, I can actually relate to that like whatever we experience there is an impact of that however little it is but then there is an impact of that in our lives in the future that we have so yeah that that really makes sense and like you were saying something about freedom so I remember reading one of your poems where you uh, talked about the heart to be free and not to be uh, bounded or captivated by anything and like let it grow, let it do things that it wants to. So I would want to know from you that uh, what freedom means to you? What do you think it is to be free from within, like you say? From within, you know, I think when we, if we look at that, you know, question um, in, a, in a spiritual sense, because that's always going to be the way that I that I look at things. It's about the freedom from your own thinking, the freedom from the restrictiveness of your own thoughts. Because you know, when when you think so much, you uh, you get out of the present moment, and you're no longer really living and loving life. You know, because you're just overwhelming yourself with so much of those thoughts that are linked to you know, fear and doubt and anxiety and all those other things. So for me personally, I think to experience freedom is to have that uh, knowing and that awareness that you are already free. It's just this, the mind and the way that you're conditioned to think that kind of traps you, but it's really self-imposed. And, um, you know, because it's, it is, it does sometimes happen, you know, there are circumstances where somebody else is holding you captive or, is, you know, forcing you to do something. But majority of the time, it's like, let's say you're in a really toxic relationship and, yeah. you know, you're aware of it now. It's like, you have a choice, you know, you're just choosing to be there. And, and, that's, and then you want to kind of, you know, complain about being there, but it's like, 
you made that choice. And so you can also make the choice to leave it and let it go, you know? So I think freedom is really that, um, that courage to, to make that choice. And the driving force behind that needs to be love because I don't think people make change unless there's love behind it. Yeah, right. And sometimes people just decide to hold on to things. <laughs> right. Also, I That's find true. that your uh, writing is very free. Like, there is no pattern. You don't really focus on rhyming things. I I really love that. So, how do you describe your style of writing? Would you want to put it in a category? Or uh, what, what style it is? Is it? You know, it's for me. It's really, it's the um, again because it's coming directly from the heart. It it doesn't really need the. I don't know if conjugation is the right word, but I, I feel like it doesn't need the the, the grammatical structure because you know the, the the way that the heart is. You know, it has that consistency. It has that. You know, it's its own beat based on the individual, and I think that's what my writing is. It, it's really representative of who I am. So if I were to categorize me, I, I, or categorize my writing, it would be like analogous to categorizing myself, which I don't think I could do that because we, ha- we, you and I, everybody else, we have so many layers and so many dimensions and so many abilities that we really don't need to categorize ourselves and I guess if I could um I would say it's 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 more like prose you know it's it's very much like prose and it's um it's the language of the heart yeah right yeah so I don't know I'm sure it's been done before but I just don't, I, I don't see my writing in someone else's work and I don't see someone else's work in my writing. Like, I, I, I don't, every poet, every writer has their own um, beautiful way of styling things. And I think that's how we learn. Like, I think that's hmm. the greatest way to learn is by admiring, like, for example, I, I have not read anything that you've written, but I'm sure if I do, I could learn something from it. You know, and if you were to change that or if you were to try and minimize it, maybe it would lose its essence. Yeah, right. So, so were you ever inspired by someone? Like, uh, obviously you have your life experiences, but any person or some famous poet or writer, did someone ever inspire you to write? I think, you know, when I... I, uh, when you sent me the list of questions, I was kind of thinking about them, and there wasn't a certain person, or there wasn't a certain uh, thing that kind of came into my life to kind of force me to write, or like you know, bring that spark out in me. I think I just wanted to because maybe I realized as a kid that like the books I was reading and the things that I was getting in my head when I was reading them. I, I kind of just sucked that all in and I I absorbed it. And then later I realized that I could also create that world through my work, you know? And then now that I'm older, I think I have more value for famous poets like Pablo Neruda. And, but, but what it is is that it's the spiritual work I think that inspires me the most. Like, I don't know if you've ever read like Rumi, yeah, yeah, if you've ever yeah. read any of like his work, or Khalil Gibran, um, mm-hmm. or Kabir, or Rabindranath Tagore. Mm-hmm. Like those are the ones where I feel they touch my soul, and and that's. I, I I'm not saying that that's the group that I'm part of, but nowhere near that, you know. But those are the authors that I hold in high esteem, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, there, there is no group. Again, that would be a category. So let's not <laughs> yeah. go into that. Yeah. So uh, your book is a collection of 15 poems, if I'm, if I'm not wrong. There are 15 poems, right? I think so. More or mm-hmm. less, give or take. So, uh, and I. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. I'm so, sorry. like. I'm uh, so 
No, no, just <laughs> you you go on. What were you saying? No, no, I was just going to say there 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 is much more. Hmm. Um it's kind of, you know, not hidden by choice, but <laughs> it's uh, okay. all in my storage here, so I, I do have a lot more to share. Yes, I think you should come up with your next book very soon. <laughs> <laughs> so in this one like which one is I I know this this might be a very stupid question but which <laughs> one is the closest to your heart in this one Can you choose Which one is the closest I would say I wish I had the book in front of me Um I've been giving the the copies away oh. Um I think emergence and the hmm i would say emergence and i think there's one about realization and oh man it's i guess i have to choose one right <laughs> no like you can list three or four if you want yeah i would say emergence and and truth um probably because those are the only titles i can remember <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just kidding. Uh, you know, cuz like once you write it, it's like okay, it's it's gone. <laughs> like, I I, find, don't like, I sometimes attempt at writing poetry. I won't call myself a poet, but I find it really difficult to give my poems a title. I don't usually do that. I just write the whole poem and just leave it like that. So <laughs> that is why yeah. I was so interested in the titles. How did you like name them? It's funny because I feel like there's like uh for me because I don't know if it's because I'm I'm just very like hypercritical of myself but it's like if I leave it untitled I don't feel like it's complete. So okay. when I title it I'm like okay it's done. You know <laughs> like I don't need to come back to it now like it's yeah. uh it's in- so uh, there is a process where I'll like keep going back to the poem or like I do have a revision process. I don't just kind of write and that's it. Mm-hmm. I do kind of read it over again and sometimes better words come about, you know. Mm-hmm. And um after the revision process, I'm like, okay, I mean, I can it it deserves a title now. And usually it just depends I think on on the um what I'm feeling at the moment because sometimes the title comes before the work and other times the work comes before the title. Yeah, so right. yeah so uh, do you remember the story behind any one of your poems like what was your state of mind while writing it or what was going on in your life uh, while you were writing it do you remember anything of that sort yeah i uh, you know because seeds of light it came about over a few years so it was, it was kind of like a couple years a good few years of my experiences that I put all together and um I would say I was going through a bit of a um spiritual turmoil and uh you know it was like things that I had associated my identity to you know like it's so easily done like work or you know materialism those things started to kind of die and slip away and fall apart and it was like i i just found, found myself in a really dark space mm-hmm. and um <clears throat> i also realized that even in the dark space that's kind of where the the true birthing process occurs so it was like that's where you know i know there's a poem in there about the butterfly and how it transforms and stuff and so <clears throat> i will say that um one thing i remember about writing that was that i i went through a really painful experience and uh it it drove me so far to the edge and i had to pull myself back and it wasn't it it took me getting to the edge to actually realize like that there is some sort of power or there is you know that light that's always going to be with me but it was like i had to go so far to to get in touch with that again and to connect with that again. And um so when I created Seeds of Light it's really it, it does have a much much more spiritual relevance than I even can put into words because it it's 
almost like the saving of somebody's life you know it's like those experiences were the making of me but they also could have been the breaking of me and who knows right if I could have ever completed Seeds of Light or if I would have ever been here because of how much emotional anguish I was going through and so that's why I I was struck with this awareness that you know what there's other people that go through this too and unfortunately they they don't make it through you know and they don't get to see the light on the other side because they just stood on the edge and they jumped off and they didn't really take the chance to like you know get in touch with that light and within them and um it's really deep uh and it's it's one of those spiritual transformation processes that um i think maybe just a selective amount of individuals may go through or i don't know how that works but what it was for me was very chaotic and um but you know on the bright side it it gave way to seeds of light and it gave way to you know this creation of love and truth and you know honoring the journey and 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 paying your respects to the gift that is life you know and um sometimes i when i hear myself talk i'm like people probably don't understand what i'm saying or like no i i but, totally do i totally do <laughs> Yeah, I think to some level we all connect um you know to those deeper emotions. We just may not want to always admit it. Mm-hmm. Um so I unfortunately I can't give you a specific um story. It's just it was a big part of who I am and um I will always you know respect that version of myself that wrote Seeds of Light. But now that that book is done, it's like I'm moving on to the next version of myself which I would like to consider is is healed and grown from that experience and can now open myself up to what lies beyond and 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 you know um learn more things and grow more spiritually as well. Yeah, like I'm so happy that you came out of that dark phase and you did something creative after that. Because yeah. I think when we when we like go through something like that sometimes we start to feel more and we start to uh, like understand others more we try to understand their pain then we uh, like compare us with them and then we some somewhere we uh, like understand that all of us are interconnected at some level yes so yes. I'm, i'm really glad <laughs> you did that So I was oh going to uh, ask you to read one of your pieces if it's accessible either from the anthology or uh, like any of your pieces but I don't think you'd be able to do that right now. I don't know. Um let me let me see. You know, I I have my I have this little thing here that I carry around with me and there might be something in there I can read from but oh, I'm great. assuming if I If I move my phone or something we're going to get we're going to lose our connection here so I would like to It's so funny cuz I just gave away my very last copy and I I've, I've been giving it to pretty much you know I they're strangers essentially but um Okay. They were very interested. They were very interested in in hearing about it. So <clears throat> and reading about it. I'm sorry. I'm giving don't you have so many, much trouble. No, no. <laughs> I don't have many friends that like to read. You're no trouble at all. Um Let's see here. Okay. Give me one second. <laughs> How much time do we have here just so I'm aware? We are just coming at the end of it. Okay. I'm hoping I'm not um overdoing. I I actually do have a poem in here that I really do want to share. Um, no, we have time. Or... Just there's no time limit oh, here. Oh, I have time. <laughs> okay. 
it, the other challenge will be to see if I can actually read my own writing. <laughs> oh, let me let me show you this. Let me actually turn this around. Can I do that? Yeah, sure. Uh, all right, here we go. So this is my okay. my mess. Um, <laughs> this is kind of so. I was at work the other day and I just started writing and I couldn't stop. Um, and oh my god! Just, this is what it looks like, you know. Uh, don't mm. worry, this isn't my poem, but um. It's really just, this oh, is the one I want to okay. read. But yeah, so that's kind of how it looks. Um, just mm. looks like a bunch of... Wow. A bunch of words. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's cluttery. Um, so this one... Okay, so this is a good example of kind of how, how it starts out. So mm -hmm. when I begin to write, uh, this is a very fragmented piece, and it, it goes like this. I called it prosperity, I don't know why. Um, trespassing chords, revoking, revoking noise once heard, bringing conundrums, boistering my spirit above, the ocean tide, buoyancy that cannot be matched, subside or dive, invoking power through courage, enhancing love through joining parts, of soul, love becomes when truth is told, the soul knows, victory begins to show, no longer withhold, withdraw the arrow, drop the shield, the heart is above the battlefield, attraction fizzles, passion wears out, love grows, as within, so without, and it is um, a shorter one, uh, and then I have this one here, my mind ablaze, reconnecting I to the haze, plainly seated in my lap, an empty sheet in a torn up bag, traveling through to get to you. Inside my dreams, a heart that calls me in a place between the wave and the shore, a moment where the beating cannot be ignored. Traveling through to get to you, a word, a mental gateway, to purify pain, an extra mile, my mind ablaze, reciting the lines in which your soul spoke to mine. To you, I give my name. That one is called oh. To You. Wow. Yeah. I love the line. You, uh, you know? the, <laughs> the moment where the beating can't be ignored. I, I love that line. I love that line. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I don't even know why I'm saying thank you, you know. I, I, I feel like I really shouldn't say thank you. I, I should just... It's such, a, it's such a big deal, you know, for, for a writer and, and you as your, you know, you're an author yourself. I'm sure you know. It's just like it's such a weird feeling when somebody uh, appreciates your work, you know. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to take it in because it's, it's... Yeah, it's, I get it. So, overwhelming <laughs> but thank you again for the time and um, it was a great interview thank you so much for giving us your time and the last question that I would want to ask you is how was your experience in the whole publishing process like uh, did you encounter any trouble or did you did it go very smoothly how was oh, it absolutely it was a total mess and um, mm -hmm. You guys are awful, and I, I have, you know, <laughs> zero stars. <I'm> just <laughs> no, um, in all honesty, I think it was a, um, I'm totally kidding, by the way. <laughs> it was, <laughs> I felt like you guys, you know, put as much trust and faith in my, my work as I was putting in, or probably even more than I was, which is, a quality, a rare quality to find out here and in publishing houses. So I felt like it was a, uh, it felt like soul family, you know, and, and it was so, it was such a easy process and it was quick and it was efficient and timely. And I think for any, you know, writer or, um, you know, author that's trying to get a platform or just just starting out and doesn't really have an idea I think you guys are probably the best bet because you're not out here trying to take advantage of people and you know I, I think that's, that was really important to me so 
thank you guys as a team and um yeah thank it's you been so much really... i'm so glad to hear <laughs> that thank you yeah you guys are amazing and you're, you're i was just about to hard. apologize <laughs> i know that's how sincere you are you're like <laughs> what did we do what can we do better but i think you guys pretty much hit the nail on on everything so thank you thank you thank you so much so on that note we would want to end today's session thank you so much just kiran for all the beautiful insights and uh, like i told you i was really excited for this session because uh, one because i love poetry and second because i read some of your poems and i wanted to know your perception about them because you know a poet's perception and the reader's perception sometimes are very different so now i know and i had a great time thank you so much for giving us your time and that too while you are traveling thank you <laughs> i'm Likewise. sure uh, like the viewers who are going to uh, listen to this interview they are also going to learn a lot of new things and like it it was very enlightening thank you thank you and uh you like, have a very kind heart and um i you know really feel your your genuinity and um i appreciate your efforts and uh, thank you for connecting with me and thank you thank you to the listeners thank you